always wanted to feel different, unique. Objective analysis, however, concluded that we are but one in many single worker bees. Everyone's getting rich, except you. What seems to be the problem? We are dying. Who's we? Us. Ourselves. But there's only one of you. So it would appear. Right, uh, Quinn, how's it hanging? Is it hanging at all well? Eh? Hey? Sorry. A fear of death, fear of life, fear of open spaces, fear of people. We see nothing most of all. Are you trying to be difficult? Been handpicking talent to crunch it since before I was hired. Nobody lasts. It's a guaranteed burnout project. Zero theorem. All very hush hush. Zero must equal 100%. Good, Good luck. luck. I give him two weeks. Are you here alone? We're generally everywhere alone. You think my dress is incredibly ugly? My dad used to buy me these incredibly ugly clothes to keep the boys away. Only made me want to get naked. Excuse us. Zero must equal 100%. Where is this place? All in your mind. We're safe here. Zero must equal 100%. What happened to you, man? Life, life happens to everybody, all right? The only reason you're not laughing is because you're the punchline. You have made a very big mistake. We don't believe you. Why would you want to prove that all is for nothing? Close your eyes. And now, picture it in your mind. I know we're connected somehow. Just come with me. We always wanted to feel a reason for being, the meaning of our life. Connected. We can be together for real. That's a Terry Gilliam film, all right, and Terry Gilliam is an acquired taste. He actually reminds me a lot of comic book writer Grant Morrison, and people who read comics I think will instantly know what I'm talking about, but allow me to explain. Now, when I first watched this trailer, uh, my initial reaction was like, whoa, that is very impenetrable, and it's very inside Terry Gilliam's head. Uh, some people love taking a trip into Terry Gilliam's head, but it's, a, it's not a lot of people. As I said, it's an acquired taste. Uh, and I'm a little uh, off-put by when he gets this, you know, inside baseball, I guess is the term maybe I would use, or, or you know, inside baseball for Terry Gilliam. Uh, and so the reason I bring up Grant Morrison is that Grant Morrison also has a tendency when he's not edited, when someone's not watching him and pulling back and being like, okay, Grant, come on, this movie's just not, this comic book or movie just isn't for you, other people have to watch it, uh, you know, he kind of gets out of control and makes this stuff very hard to read. So it runs the gamut from being really groundbreaking, accessible, interesting storytelling to impenetrable, seeming, you know, just like mush, you know, that you have to really dig to find the stroke of genius. And if you make the effort, sometimes you find it, sometimes, you know, you don't. I guess it depends on who's doing the digging. Uh, now, Terry Gilliam has made some, I think, more, more mainstream films. Mainstream for him, I think his most mainstream film is perhaps The Fisher King. Really good movie. He also did a great job uh, with uh, 12 Monkeys. I really like 12 Monkeys a lot. And then, of course, I really liked Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, which is, I think, like the happy medium. Like, it's just crazy enough to make Terry Gilliam happy, but it has just enough Johnny Depp and Benicio Del Toro, and it's just accessible enough for a mainstream audience member to stick with it. Uh, but then, of course, you know, he goes off the deep end a lot with Brazil and uh, The Adventures of Baron Munchausen. You know, those are films, again, impenetrable, hard to really get into. And that's how I feel about this. Uh, I feel this is going to have a very limited audience. And I question, you know, I, I know that we have this argument a lot. There are those of you who will go, well, look, Terry Gilliam just wants to make what he wants to make, and we should respect that. That's fine. But, you know, I'm wondering who's giving him the money to make a movie like this, because I feel, I don't really, you know, I, I really hated it inside Lewin Davis, the recent Coen Brothers movie. But there was a great line in it that I thought was, um, really indicative of the entertainment business. And well, that's when F, this is a spoiler, slight spoiler if you haven't seen Inside Lewin Davis. And he says to F, uh, F. Murray Abraham says to um, uh, Lewin, he says, uh, I don't see a lot of money here. And that's what I would say about this movie. I don't see a lot of money here. The other thing I found disappointing is that I so fell in love with Christoph Waltz as Hans Landa in Inglorious Bastards. But ever since then, he's been slowly letting me down because it's becoming more clear that he's not some brilliant actor 
uh, who has a great range and is really uh, a great, able to do great line reads. He basically is just a great actor for Quentin Tarantino. He's like Quentin Tarantino's dream actor. He does a great job with Tarantino's material. Uh, even if he always does the same thing with it. You know, his Django Unchained character, the only real difference there was, I guess, you know, a sense of morality between those two characters. Uh, you know, I know he won the Oscar, and he's very compelling in these roles. He won it for both roles. But as I said at the time, when I, in my Oscar coverage that year, last this was, I believe, last year, um, you know, the, his, he's just basically winning a set of Oscars for a set of roles, so the same thing. Uh, and now I see him here, all I see is Hans Landa again from Inglorious Bastards, only now Terry Gilliam gets to play with him. And I'm just disappointed that, uh, you know, the craft that I had imagined isn't there. I mean, I guess some actors, some actors never change, you know, they're, you know, particularly the highest, the biggest movie stars tend to have one persona. You know, how much range does Harrison Ford have? But I think Harrison Ford, the character that he's created, the cinema, you know, the on-screen character, has, is applicable in more applicable in more areas. Whereas I feel Christoph Waltz is maybe in maybe in Austria he plays like an everyman. So if any German or Austrian viewers, you'll have to tell me. But at least from an American sensibility, he's always playing the same you know really eccentric Austrian, and it's just disappointing that he doesn't he can't do a little bit more. Uh, and so I guess it's really up to directors to utilize. He's more of a tool. Uh, than a fellow artist, I feel. You know, just for someone else to wield, which is disappointing. I was really, I was really in his corner. I thought, I thought he was an artistic genius. He's not. He's just an uh, eccentric personality that people can use well or not well. I think he's not being used well here. But I'm curious, what do you guys think? Terry Gilliam fans, are you so excited for this? Is this more of the same? Those of you who aren't familiar with Terry Gilliam's work, are you beginning to see why that is? Uh, write your thoughts down below. Thank you for asking for my trailer review, and you can check out some more episodes right now.